Hello everyone, this is of course a continuation of my Kryoshin Law series, which is of course a fundraising series for Ukrainian refugees. Thank you guys to everyone who has already donated, and please continue to give generously. With that, we'll continue with the video. So this week we're getting to, I think what a lot of people are most interested in, the Kryoshin fleet. So the first thing to mention is the structure of the Kryoshin fleet. And it's really split into two distinct elements. First and foremost, as your commander-in-chief, you of course have the sovereign, the monarch. And attached to the sovereign and under their direct command is the Kryoshin Sovereign Guard. And this is composed of elite professionals. This, this is the standing professional fleet. And the ships of the Kryoshin Sovereign Guard can be distinguished through their blue and gold livery. No other fleet operates a blue and gold livery. In total, it has around about 48 ships, and that's four battle groups, which are generally composed of a battleship as the flagship, four battle cruisers, and then eight corvettes. And that is the Creoshan Sovereign Guard. That's quite a small force, but it's a very professional, very highly trained force. But the majority of the Creoshan fleet is localized in the Great House fleets. Now, one of the interesting things about the Great House fleets is that their ships will have custom liveries, generally in their houses, uh, different colors. So, so House Vault has red livery, um, House Rathan has green, that kind of thing. Sometimes they will have liveries to distinguish their ships, particularly the larger battle cruisers. Less often the case for the corvettes because they're of course going to be a little bit more localized and this this force altogether comprises anywhere between about 75 to 100 ships so in total you're looking at a creoshan fleet in this period of about uh, 150 ships roughly which doesn't sound like much but it is much bigger than anything the united earth has and even a lot of the other major powers of the alpha quadrant so it's for the 22nd century 150 ships is quite a few. Now we'll get into the specifics of each class. So the first one to mention is the Creoshan fighter or corvette. The more observant of you will know that this is actually the pirate fighter from Enterprise's Horizon. Now the reason I use this as the Creoshan fighter is because the pirate ship is a Creoshan ship just with no color basically just in black. So it makes sense that there's an aesthetic connection there between the fighter and the pirate ship. So it makes sense that actually these fighters are just Creoshan fighters, much like the ship is just a Creoshan ship that's been repurposed and stolen by pirates. So the Creoshan fighter, they will either be gold or grey. They may or may not have a livery. Fighters of the Sovereign Guard will, but of the other houses, not necessarily unless you're specifically going out to label yourself, because they're more defensive. They're not going to go outside of their home systems. They are a defensive corvette. Um, they're about 80 meters long and 50 meters wide and have about three decks. They're quite small ships, but very good sort of light corvettes. Uh, in terms of armament, you have two particle cannons on a turret and you have two warhead launchers. It's quite a light armament, but it's enough for what what its job is. And particularly when you start thinking about this operating in wolf packs or in pairs, suddenly that firepower becomes a lot more effective, particularly when you combine it with the fact that these are, of course, very fast. They're very fast and very agile. So they can often overwhelm larger targets when working together. Of course, in larger fleet actions, their goal is really to support the battle cruisers. But like I say, they're a largely defensive corvette. In terms of where it stands compared to its Klingon counterparts, it's probably superior to a Klingon raider, which is quite small. Probably about equal or even a little bit weaker than a Klingon gunboat or Goroth ship, as you would perhaps better know it, which is more heavily armed. Probably not as fast, but very heavily armed and very robust. That then brings us to the main, the mainstay of the Creoshan fleet. This is the Creoshan battle cruiser, and again they will be coloured in gold or grey, and they will often feature the livery of the respective houses. 
In terms of size, it's about 220 meters long, which is about the same size as the NX-01, but it's much sleeker and, and more agile in its build. So it's quite, um, it's quite compact. It's certainly not as broad hulled as the NX-01. It's got quite a low profile. It's got about eight decks, despite it being 220 meters, which is quite big for the time. It's still surprisingly agile. It's it's quite a minimal ship. It's really only got enough weaponry to get by for a ship of the for a ship of its size. Again, it is designed to work as part of a fleet. It's worth remembering that most of the time there aren't going to be ships of a similar size to engage it, so it can get away with being a bit lighter armored and thus have a little bit more speed and agility so that it can pursue and threaten those smaller, lighter ships. So in terms of its armament, it has three particle cannons, two on the dorsal, one on the ventral, and four warhead launchers in the wings. It's about comparable, probably a little bit better, probably a little bit tougher, but it's in terms of firepower, it's about comparable to the NX-01. And if you think about the number of weapon emplacements and where they are, it's actually very similar loadout. But it is probably a little bit more robust, it probably has some... Uh, early she early forms of shields and some good armor as well. I could definitely see this having the agility over the NX-01 and that combined with equal firepower would give it significant advantage. Now in terms of where it stands compared to its Klingon counterparts, it depends partially on which model. If you're looking at the Sovereign Guard model, you're going to be looking at something that's about equivalent to a D4. In order to effectively engage a D4, it has to get inside effective range, and the D4 has to let that happen and not get out of the battle cruiser's range, because the D4 is more of a torpedo cruiser than it is a disruptor cruiser. The more standard ones that are issued to the great houses are probably more comparable, if not a little bit superior, to a Klingon Raptor. Now, many of you would be thinking, well, hang on a second, I thought the Raptor was a scout. And if you look at it compared to the other Klingon ships of the 22nd century, no, the Raptor is a light cruiser by every metric. Now we get to the crown jewel of the Creoshan fleet, and those of you who are more observant will know that this is a... Actually, I'm reusing the Lokiram warship model, because they're the same model, just with extra bits bolted on. And that is the Creoshan battleship. Now, this is exclusive, or supposedly exclusive to the Sovereign Guard, and there are only a total of four of these in service. They have the same chassis as the Creoshan Battlecruiser, as well as some additional wings bolted on, but it is much, much more heavily laden. This is a substantial step up from the Creoshan Battlecruiser. The Creoshan Battleship has, for its loadout, seven particle cannons, this is more than double what the battlecruiser has. And then for warhead launchers, it has four times as many. It has 16 warhead launchers. This is an absolute beast. Absolute beast. And it's got stronger shields and armor, all the typical defensive systems. The Creoshan battleship is a beast of its time. It really is. There's very few things out there certainly in the beta quadrant that could match it, aside from probably the massive Malurian dreadnoughts, but those don't really count. Um, certainly, it is superior to any Klingon ship. Even the D5 is not going to stand a chance one-on-one -on -one with a Creoshan battleship. It is a monster of firepower. It is a monster of the 22nd century. It really is. To beat it, you'd have to be starting to look at Alpha Quadrant powers like the Andorians or the Vulcans to really match what this has going on. So it really is the crown jewel of the Creoshan fleet and really has some welly behind it. And uh, it certainly will give any Klingon second thoughts. So that's the main combat arm of the Creoshan fleet. Now I shall mention there are just some other vessels such as the transport ship and cargo ship. Transports about 220 meters has a good troop capacity, as well as the cargo ship, which primarily transports supplies. These are all kind of generic ships of the 22nd century. It's also worth remarking 
that if needs be, you can sometimes see the Creoshans working with the Orions to support the Orions because that's how Pax Orionis works. You know, the other powers sometimes have to muck in to make sure that the Orions can maintain the security of the shipping lanes. It does work both ways, so some Creoshan houses do buy some Orion ships. It's not frequently done, but it's not completely unheard of, though it is quite rare, but it's worth bearing in mind. You have all the domestic Creoshan designs, and those will comprise the majority of the Creoshan fleet, but it will also be partially made up of whatever that house wants to buy in from foreign producers. So uh, so that's basically the Creoshan fleet. As I say, it's quite an impressive fleet for the 22nd century. Very heavy emphasis on operating as a large-scale formation and very much emphasizing its strength in capital ships. In that way, you can actually see it very different to a lot of its neighbors. You can see it very different to the Orions that place more emphasis on smaller, more agile light frigates and corvettes whereas the klingons put more of an emphasis on they have more of an emphasis on battle cruisers but it is still quite it, it depends well it partially depends which klingons you're fighting i'll leave it at that because just to say you're fighting klingons is you know there's a very broad thing to say but in terms of how it stands in the 22nd century with about 150 ships that's quite a strong fleet and certainly it's a very well established power of the 22nd century and there's no easy prey that's for damn sure they're not going to go down easily whoever wants to fight with them the creoshans are more than prepared to meet that challenge so thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next one